Hi. In today's video, I wanted to take a look at this uh, Hittite HMC 624 LP4E digital attenuator board, which has a bandwidth of between DC and 6 GHz. I can't remember exactly when I got this board, but uh, it was probably 5 or 6 years ago, and I don't think I had ever powered it up or used it before. Now, of course, I wish I had found it earlier, or at least remember that I had one of these digital attenuators in my possession, since it could have come in quite handy in some of my previous RF experiments, because I don't have any dedicated RF attenuators in my lab. And I have been relying on either the attenuators in my test instrument or a few of the 3 dB bandwidth uh, broadband pads that I have. Now, of course, this uh, HMC 624 LP4E chip had become obsolete and had been replaced with HMC 624 A-EP uh, made by analog devices. And I wonder if the discontinuation of this part had more to do with Hittite's acquisition by analog devices back in 2014 rather than anything else. Because if you compare the datasheet for these two chips, which I have printed out here, you will see that uh, uh, the functional diagrams and the pinouts, they are exactly identical, and also the uh, specifications for the, uh, the, the two chips are almost uh, identical as well. So we can just go through some of the, uh, the, uh, the major points here. This one is from DC to 3 gigahertz, uh, sorry, to 6 gigahertz. And we have some typical insertion loss. This is the Hittite part. And whereas here we have a, uh, uh, interestingly enough, the analog devices is only, uh, instead of going from DC, it's going from 0 0.1 gigahertz, which is 100 megahertz, all the way up to 6 gigahertz. But uh, the, in terms of insertion loss, it has slightly better um, characteristics, not by too much. You can see here is a typical 1.6 uh, decibels between the uh, 0 0.1 to 3 gigahertz bandwidth, where, whereas here in the Hittite we have a 1.8 typical. So it is ever so slightly better uh, spec-wise, but nevertheless these two parts are identical. And um, if you look at uh, the data sheet here, this is the Hittite part again, you will see that uh, the chip is referred to as an MMIC, which stands for monolithic microwave IC, and depending on the required operating frequencies, these kind of chips can be fabricated using gallium arsenide, which has a higher electron mobility compared to that of uh, silicon. And uh, uh, it translates into higher swishing, spe swishing speeds, and thus allowing higher operating frequencies. Of course, MMICs are not limited to be just using gallium arsenide. And you can also find them made with gallium nitrate or silicon germanium. And because of the feature size have shrunk significantly in recent years, there are actually MMICs built using the traditional silicon process, which has major cost advantages over the semiconductor materials mentioned earlier. Anyway, this is a totally different topic, and I'm sure that you can find a lot of useful information on the internet if you wanted to learn more. And uh, I wanted to point out, while I uh, don't know exactly how uh, this particular IC works besides the, the general functional diagram shown here in the datasheet, generally speaking though, digital attenuators can be built using a passive attenuation network switched by field effect transistors. And so I suspect that's exactly what this uh, chip is all about. Anyway, what I wanted to do is to build some digital controlling circuitry so that I can control the attenuator digitally rather than relying on the parallel interface, which uh, is what this, these buttons uh, do. So basically the idea is that we have, uh, uh, I think, six bits in this uh, particular uh, chip. So we can switch on and off each uh, bit, which controls the attenuation, and which we, we can take a look uh, just shortly. By the way, uh, this is actually a four-layer board. And look at how beautiful the gold-plated uh, ground plane at the back looks. And notice that the via fencing, and you can actually see quite clearly here, the via fencing uh, that is used for reducing the, uh, the crosstalk. 
uh, between your signal line, signal line and uh, the remaining circuitry. So basically it's to shield it from uh, uh, everything else to reduce uh, interference. Anyway, so now let's uh, uh, hook it up and uh, do some preliminary testing with this board. So here's my setup to test the performance of this board. From the left side, we have the signal input from the HP 8642B signal generator. And uh, after the, uh, this passes through the attenuator, we go uh, into this spectral analyzer, 8566B. Now, of course, we don't have to use a spectral analyzer. In fact, later on, I'm going to, uh, after I modify the, the circuitry, I'm going to use a uh, power meter hooked to the output so we can precisely measure the output power. But uh, since I just fixed this uh, HP 8566B a while ago, I thought I would just uh, use it in this video, uh, at least for the preliminary testing of this board. So now let me set up the input signal and, uh, and we adjust it a little bit so we can see it on the spectral analyzer. For this test, I'm going to set the input to two gigahertz. So frequency two gigahertz. And that's pretty much the upper limit of this HP 8642B signal generator. I'm going to set the amplitude to, let's say, 0 dBm. And, uh, and on the special analyzer side, I'm going to set the center, the center frequency to 2 GHz. So center frequency, 2 GHz. After I set it up, you should see uh, a tone popping up here. And uh, that's at the uh, maximum attenuation. So let's uh, reduce the, the, the bandwidth a little bit. Let's set the frequency span to, uh, let's see, 50 megahertz. And at this point, we can see that uh, the, the signal is roughly uh, 40 dB down from the baseline. So let's uh, put a marker on it. And indeed, we're seeing about uh, minus 39, I can't see it uh, that clearly from here, but uh, roughly that's uh, the, uh, the number. Now, of course, uh, the reason for that is even though the maximum attenuation for this board is uh, at 31.5 decibel, um, the reason is that we have some losses in these uh, cables, very long cables, and they, these are not very high quality cables, but uh, we only want to see what the, the relative uh, uh, measurement is. So now, if you can see that I powered this board using the bench supply at 5 volts, and I should be able to adjust these uh, switches, and we'll see that uh, the, uh, the uh, received amplitude changes. So now, let's just uh, turn on a random bit. Uh, I think like the four banks underneath are all for zero to, uh, I can't see that clearly. Oh yes, for the, uh, the, the first four bits. So let's turn on one. And uh, you can see it changes slightly. I suspect if I change the, uh, the upper a bit so we'll see it more clearly. Yep, so now you, you can see that if I change the bit number six, uh, we decrease the attenuation because originally it was at the maximum. And so if we flip all the uh, six bits up, we'll see that uh, this gets closer to zero dBm. And uh, right now, that the minus 7.8, that's uh, purely, depend, uh, purely due to the uh, cable losses. So you can see that uh, this board works uh, as uh, designed. And of course we can uh, change it to any numbers between uh, zero to 31.5 uh, decibel attenuation. Of course, the, the step is uh, determined by the, uh, uh, the num number of bits available here. So right now, the, the minimum step you can do is 0.5 decibel which is, uh, uh, I think it's the zero bit here, which you can barely see. And uh, obviously, the, this is just a demo board, rather, uh, to show you the capability of this chip. Of course, in uh, regular use, it's not very useful uh, because you have to do the bit, with, uh, the bit math if you wanted to achieve certain attenuation. So I thought, why not uh, go ahead and build a uh, digital controlling circuitry because this chip, besides using the parallel controls, it can also use the uh, SPI three-wire protocol to control the attenuation. So that should be pretty straightforward. And uh, let me uh, just whip up a quick uh, Arduino circuitry and uh, we'll see how it works. 
And uh, here's the circuitry that I whipped up uh, quickly and uh, to just to show you how it works. Now, of course, afterwards, when I'm satisfied, I will put this into a project box and uh, finish up this project. But right here, you can see that we have this Arduino board that controls uh, everything here. And I have this uh, display, which configured uh, using the serial adapter board, so that I can save some pins. And on the control here I have is this rotary encoder. And uh, so to, to adjust the, uh, the output attenuation. Now, now, a couple of words on the user interface. Since uh, we only have one rotary encoder to control everything, and I thought I would just go through my thought process on how uh, to make it the most intuitive uh, for using this uh, one rotary encoder to adjust the output attenuation. Of course, one easiest way to do that is whenever you twist a knob, the output attenuation would change. But that's probably uh, not as uh, good as we have a mechanism to lock it. The reason because, you know, sometimes you accidentally touch it and while you are working on something else and you could accidentally change the output attenuation. So as you can see here, by default, the output attenuation is locked. And upon powering up, this thing sits at the minus 31.5 decibel. And so if you, uh, let me just uh, turn this. If you right now try to turn it, right, nothing happens. So the idea here is uh, we have some kind of a mechanism to lock the user out of the uh, uh, this uh, control. Now, if you do want to change it, uh, we can push this button. So then you will see that uh, now we enter the mode that we can actually change the uh, the readings and this uh, attenuation um, lock change to adjust. So now we can twist this uh, knob and uh, let me just twist this. So you can see that we can change the output by um, uh, at a step of uh, 0.5 decibel per step. And when you hit the lower limit, it just stays there. And similarly, when you hit the upper limit, which is uh, 31.5 decibel, it stays there as well. So when you are satisfied with your, with your uh, attenuation values, let's just say we set to 20, and we hit it again. Oops, sorry about that. We hit, um, it's, and it's not against like the stand. We hit this button again, and you will see that uh, uh, this is locked at 20 decibels. So this design uh, prevents user from accidentally uh, hitting the, uh, uh, twisting the knob and uh, change the value to something that is not intended for. So let's take a look at uh, how this works with uh, with the uh, um, the output hooked down to my WaveTech RF power meter. And uh, here's the setup with the WaveTech RF power meter hooked up. And uh, the whole thing is uh, its pretty difficult to put everything in the frame of this uh, video. So things are gonna look a little uh, small, but uh, I'll try to explain it as best as I could. And again, the input comes out from the RF source, which is currently off. And the output right now goes into the detector via this uh, uh, coax. And uh, so right now, what you're looking at, the meter readout, is basically just a noise floor, which is sitting at the minus 63 uh, dBm. Uh, now, we can turn on RF source, RF source, and if you look at the, uh, the LCD here, right now we're at uh, the maximum uh, attenuation, which is 31.5 decibel. So I would expect that uh, thing to go somewhere around minus uh, 37, 38 because we have the cable losses here. And the output here is still set at zero dBm as we uh, did our previous experiments. So let me turn on the RF. So as you can see that we immediately jumped to minus 37. And so now I'm going to um, change the attenuation via the user interface that we described earlier and see what we got on that power meter. So now let me press this, and uh, so now we can change. So let's uh, change it to uh, 25. And you will see that uh, uh, we roughly reflected the uh, about 6 dBm's uh, uh, power reading. Of course, now let me just uh, change it all the way to uh, zero attenuation, and we can uh, change our power output to 
kind of coincide with this reading. So right now we're sitting at minus 6.3 dBm. So I'm going to adjust the power output. Let's say the power output I wanted to put as 6.5 uh, dBm. So roughly we're zeroed out here. So now let's take a look at when, as we step through the uh, attenuation steps and uh, we let's observe the output power. So let me again hit on it. So let's do the smallest step, which is a 0.5 decibel. So let's hit, uh, and you can see that we changed from the 0.1 some decibel uh, dBm to minus 0.3536. So that's roughly 0.5 dBm. And we can further change it. So let's do one. And again, uh, you can see that the, there is a 0.5 dBm change in our power reading. So now I can keep changing this. So now let's do 5. And you can see that uh, uh, our power reading again reflects what we have in this control interface. So now I have this uh, uh, nice digital readout control. So I can pretty much dial in any attenuation changes that I want. For example, right now I'll do uh, 15 dBm. And uh, of course, there's a little bit of uh, a gain error, which is uh, specified in the data sheet. But besides that, we can see that the output is roughly um, what, where we dialed it at. So now I have this nice digitally controlled uh, attenuator, which can attenuate input signal anywhere between 0 and uh, 6 gigahertz. Uh, any attenuation between 0 dBm to 31.5 dBm. So here again, we can dial in, let's say, 24 dBm. So we're a little bit off, but uh, nevertheless, it is uh, pretty accurate. And again, we can control that at the level of 0.5. So now I'm going to dial 24.5. As you can see, that we jump from 23.3 to 23.8. Now, of course, uh, the setup uh, has some um, uh, accuracy limitations, and also the uh, chip has some accuracy limitations as well. So that is pretty much what I want to show you for this uh, uh, HMC 624 LP4 uh, evaluation board and uh, what I plan to do with it. So uh, by adding this controlling circuitry, I can turn it into this digitally controlled attenuator with a very nice and intuitive user interface so that once I uh, build a project box and put it in, I will put this uh, into my uh, test gear collection and hopefully can use it in some of my videos in the future. And I hope you like the video and learn something new. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a big thumbs up and remember to subscribe, share, and I will catch up with you next time.